I'm on northbound I-5 right here, crossing the Sacramento River at Dutchview. Look at the little uh, uh, grandstand right here on the left. It's uh, facing to the west, the field. Uh, in 1923, uh, Babe Ruth and the Boston Babes were barnstorming with Wade Garrett and the Larry Lutes. You know Babe Ruth and uh, Luke Garrett, they're Hall of Fame, uh, Yankee retired numbers, the whole bit. Anyway, you know, these guys uh, didn't make a whole hell of a lot of money, so they barnstormed until the weather became just too rough to play. So they were here in 1923 um, barnstorming. I got a picture of it somewhere, or uh, I've uh, uh, used on Facebook. So anyway, Dunsmuir has had Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig play that day. Okay, I was wrong. Actually, uh, the game uh, was October 22nd, 1924, and it wasn't the Larrapin Lose and the Bustin' Babes, because that was in 1927 when they wore those jerseys. Here's the Bustin' Babes uh, jersey uh, sold by Ebbetsfield Flannels, my personal crack cocaine. Here's the 1934 U.S. Tour of Japan. Speaking of barnstorming uh, jersey, I have one of these sold by Ebbetsfield Flannels. But the, the movie uh, about this is called The Catcher Was a Spy. It's about Mo Berg. Now here's Mo Berg right now. He had a 15-year career in the majors, and he brought his movie camera over to Japan in 1934 and took a lot of film that turned out to be pretty useful after December 7th, 1941, Mo spoke 12 or 14 languages. He was an interesting dude. I haven't seen the movie. I hope to one day. Yeah, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon here on Saturday. Even though I was on the road at 12, I, I'm starting to fade right here. So I thought, well, why don't I pull into the rest stop and just stay overnight here like I did at Dunnigan? Well, when I pull off here, you're going to see that there's a, uh, a key that takes you to the airport right next door on the right right here. So when you get up to the rest stop, if you stay to the left, it's an RM for the freeway. And if you stay with the right, you go into the rest stop. And a lot of people stop here and take pictures of Mount Shasta. Well, as I'm pulling up, I see the sign, not the first one. But the second one that says no overnight parking. Now the one in Dunnigan said no camping. Well, that doesn't mean the same thing. And you know, some of you who know me for a long time know that you, know, you need to be exact sometimes when you talk to me. Anyway, if you notice the spots on the right, they had two RV spots. Now I suspect that these uh, uh, that these uh, truckers are are parked overnight. It's Saturday. They get 70 hours in a week to drive, and I bet they're out of hours, and they're going to be there tomorrow, too, uh, when their hours reset, and then they'll leave and tr uh, drive on to wherever uh, that they're heading. So, I didn't stay here. I went ahead and went to my week. Just uh, taken off the last uh, Wairika off ramp for eastbound California 3 to Montague, and I'm 
I'm driving up here and I'm not sure quite what the deal is here to the right. You see in back of the white tractor and the white trailer, there's a guy in the dark, it looks like a Dodge uh, pickup with a, uh, a towing up, a, yeah. uh, a tank and then the white car behind them. They're somehow together or something. And you see the other white tractor trailer here, the Freightliner, wants to, you know, I'm not going to bulldog him, so I sat back and let this guy go. He's working, I'm not. And um, then this, uh, this van, a van came to. The, the RV park is literally at the end of the block right here. You see the, uh, the clubhouse office on the right, the square building with the peak roof. Now, I'm also coming up on a gal just like sitting there with no sign, no nothing. It's like, you know, you can't help everybody. So I don't know quite what her story was, but I'm going to pull it into the, to the campground and sign up for two days. Or pay for two days. I was awfully tired when I got here. It's about four o'clock. Uh, I needed to turn left between row E and row F. I'm staying in row F, and I just wasn't able to get my brain to quite function. I should have turned right here, and you can see I I've got my head up my ass. So it's a pit movement. So I'm going to drive around the building. I thought about the rest stop because I didn't want to spend, it was, it's $87 to stay here for two nights, which I thought was an outrageous gouge, but uh, the weekly rate is $190, and I'm, I'm, I might stay here for a week on the way back to San Joaquin County. Um, I'm going to stay in San Joaquin County for a week or two. I need a little bit more done to the coach. I need the uh, trap for the uh, for the for the front curtain replaced, and the fan in the bathroom needs to be replaced. Uh, so um, I went ahead and spent the money to stay here. Uh, I thought you know overnighting in a some, you know dry camping somewhere parking is usually okay for one night, but I think the CHP wouldn't be happy if I'm setting up. Camp, so and and bluntly, if you want the campgrounds to stay in business, you gotta be a customer and spend money there. So uh, I think I'm gonna be here a week on my way home, go way back to San Joaquin County. And well, thank you for watching today's little video. Travel time with Joe, I guess. And by God, enjoy your day.